What's up guys, we're all in here. This time on 3D Nerd Stop, we're gonna replace our print bed. All right guys, here we go. Here's our Robo. Uh, we're gonna replace the print bed like I said. The reason we're gonna do it is because the print bed's been chipped. Um, the chipping happened when I pulled a print off the bed. Uh, it was actually one of the pieces of the Robo's do of R2's dome. Uh, when I when I was wiggling it to pull it free, it just popped that chip out with it. So uh, I'm not gonna try and do that anymore. Uh, first, I did it with the little chip that you see. There's actually two chips in it. The little chip came out first, and then about three prints later or two prints later, something like that, the the big chip came out. So we're going to replace the bed because of it. Now I did continue to print for a while with the bed like this. I just had to make sure I shifted everything over to the other side of the print bed and kept it away from those chips. So technically the print bed is still functional, but the whole thing is not functional and I want my whole print bed back. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to swap out the print bed real quick and that'll be it. So of course the first thing we're going to need to do is power it up so we can raise the Raise the Z-axis up out of the way, get the hot end out of the way. So we'll do that. Okay, that gets it up out of our way. So now we've got full access to the print bed. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is flip it up on its side. I'm going to move it a little bit towards me. Okay, and then I'm just going to rotate it very gently. Onto its side. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I need to take this bottom plate off so we can unplug the front bed. Okay, now of course what we should always do anytime you're going to start messing with the electric electronics in it, you need to unplug it so it has no power to it because you don't want to get shocked or anything. So, Let's get a Phillips head screwdriver here. There's my... yep. And we're going to pop out all these screws real quick on the bottom. There we go. We got all the screws out of the bottom now. Now we can just take the bottom plate off. Now you got to remember to be careful because there's a fan plugged in right here which is plugged in right here. So we'll unplug that fan for temporary purposes. Ooh, look at that dirt. I want to clean this. And we'll set this off. We'll set that back out of the way. All right, guys. Let's see if I can show you this. I'm underneath the printer now, and this is the circuit board here. Uh, let's zoom back here a little bit so you can see the whole thing, maybe. There we go. This is the whole circuit board here, and there's actually two wires right here. These two wires right here need to come out. And then down here, down here, it's this plug needs to come out. Sorry, this plug right here. Okay? And the reason is, is this is, I'll show you here when we unplug this. So we unplug this one, we take it out. Alright, and then we'll switch back up here to the top real quick. So we have those. And it looks like we need a flathead screwdriver for that. Here we go. Okay, just need to get a screwdriver in these screws here. And back that off. And back that off. And those should come out. As you can see, oops, this is all one wire. So that one block we took off down here, down, further down on the motherboard, and the two we unplugged from the top. That's all the plugs for the for the heated bed. Okay. Okay. So now that we've unplugged that. If we got a piece of tape in here holding it in place, I guess it doesn't flop around on the inside. We can undo that real quick. 
and then we'll just feed the wire out the back of the printer. Pretty simple. Okay, now we have to be careful because we've got to remember we have a card reader sitting on the front of this, so we don't want the card reader getting in the way. In fact, what I should probably do is undo that real quick and then remove this card reader if I can real quick. I can always put it back on later. There we go. Just get that to come off. We'll set that off to the side. Alright guys, so I flipped it up on its face real quick. Because I want to show you, when you go to remove this, there's this bracket right here that holds the plug for the, for the print bed. Now you have to be real careful doing this, uh, especially if you flip it up. Y'all don't have to flip it up like this. You should be able to do this with it on its back or setting correctly. There's this one screw right here. If you take out this screw, whoo, take out that one screw real quick, it will release this bracket here there we go I'll find that nut in just a minute but it releases this bracket here that I just took off that holds the wire in place so you have to get that out of the way otherwise you can't take the bed off all right so now let's lay it down correctly and we'll take the bed off real quick okay now all I have to do because it's a magnetic bed because I've released all of that let's just pop the magnets and the bed should come right off which it did all right guys here you go we have ourselves the old build plate and the new build plate and if you notice one difference between the two of them it might be kind of hard for y'all to see let's see if i zoom in here if you can see it one of the differences is this one has a magnet here and it doesn't have any magnets here so we have to put the magnets on the new build plate where they belong I've been thinking about that and trying to come up with the best way to do it and well there's probably a hundred different ways to do it but this is how I came up with to do it what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of them because when you put these I'm going to, let me explain this all right you want to put two of them here like so so I have two magnets sitting back here I can go ahead and pop the front two on here, but they don't do anything. But if we take this and I flip this over and I line up those back corners and I put glue on those two magnets, I can then glue those two magnets where they go. Okay, so that'll be in the front of the build plate. All right, and then I can take the other two magnets and put them where they go in the printer and put glue on them so when I set the front two magnets in place the back should fall where it's supposed to be and that'll glue them in place kind of makes sense so what we're going to do is we're going to try and get these two back magnets glued on now the reason I don't do all four is because of all the wiring the plate tips on the wires so I can't put the magnets in the front and glue them all down at once I mean I could I guess I could Put it back here and glue it down and then put the put glue up in the front and tip it onto the magnets and glue it down but i think it'll just be easier to do it this way <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do first thing we're going to do is put some glue on these let me find my super glue here i am hoping super glue will work for this i don't know it should theoretically Nice little dollop of super glue there. I did make up some cardboard corners here to help line everything up real quick. Just throw those in there like so. And that should help. And I put this in place, theoretically. Now we'll just give that a couple minutes to dry. All right, guys. So I've been letting this sit for a couple minutes. It should be good and dry now. We'll go ahead and take our square corners off. 
Now I don't want to just yank them apart. I think the best thing to do is to slide it sideways until one magnet slides off the other, like so. Okay, there we go. Now as you can see, I have two magnets, two new magnets put where the old ones were. And they look like they're exactly where the old ones were. They look really, really good. Okay, now to do the front two, or actually technically these are the back two, we'll have to switch back over to the printer real quick. So let's do that real quick. Alright guys, here we are. As you can see, we're at the back of the, well, you can't really see much of the printer, but you got to trust me, we're at the back of the printer. Um, right here's where the magnets go on these two silver spots. So we're going to take our magnets and we're going to put them down there real quick. So now you can see I got my two magnets in place and we're going to put a drop of super glue on each of them and then I'll feed the build plate in, okay? And when I do, I'll make sure I put these these magnets down in the front I'll fill the build plate in and then I'll make sure I put these magnets down here in the front first that way it'll line the bet the line the plate up where it needs to be when I set the back down and that should work so we'll just back you off here a little bit and give it a try alright guys so like I said I'm gonna put just a tiny little drop of super glue on each of these I don't want too much because I don't want it to overflow too much and glue the magnets in. I want just enough to cover the face of the magnet when it squashes it. Hopefully it won't be too much. Then we'll carefully take the build plate and set it in, putting the front two magnets. Now, wait a second. Oh, that's not good. I did not know that. It's actually magnet to magnet. So the problem is I put those two magnets in upside down because it, it's repulsing them. I did not think of that. I thought that would be metal there, not magnets. That was my mistake. So let me see if I can figure out a way to fix this real quick. So I did manage to pry the magnet loose from the super glue and I scratched up the build plate a little bit doing it, but oh well. But the nice part is it did leave me a ring where that one was. I guess that's just not a way you can do it because these magnets, there's magnets in the printer, which is what it's stuck to. It's not a piece of metal. So they're doing magnet to magnet. So, but the nice part is because it left me these rings here, I can just take that ring and re-glue the magnet in. And yes, I did check before I did that which direction the magnet needed to be. So I already knew. So we will let that dry and harden and I'll do the other one. And then we can put the back magnets on. Alright? Alright guys. So I got that fixed. So we'll try this again. I'll put the drop of super glue on here again because I did wipe it off of these. I didn't want to let it sit there while I was trying to figure out what to do. So put the drop of super glue back on here. It's just the tiniest little drop because I really don't want any spillage. Alright. Now we'll take this, holding the cord out of the way because we don't want it to get into the glue. And this time when we take it up here, it clicks into place like it's supposed to. And then we can just set this down. Slide it forward, put a little bit of pressure on it. And just get them and it'll dry. When that's done, we'll pull it off. And then we'll reinsert the cable, the cable uh, holder that holds the cable in place. And then we'll reroute it, plug it all back in, turn it on and test it out and see if it works. Alright guys. So I've been thinking about it and this will probably be easier to install just leaving the build plate in place. So I can see how it goes in. So it goes like this, and then the wire has to come, I believe it's under and then over. So I believe if we put a little slack in here, if I do it like that, let's get a little more slack in here, there we go. 
if I can do that with it, I need the nut that fell out. I need to put that inside here. And then stick that in the hole. I believe that is all we have to do. Sorry if I'm blocking you guys. There we go, I think that holds our cable in place. That looks like it'll do it. All right, so let's wire our cable in. All right guys, so we're gonna wire our cable in. So first thing we'll do is pull the bill plate over here and pull it all the way out the other side. That way we know the length the build this cable has to be. And we can feed it in here. And leave ourselves a little bit of slack sticking out the back over here. When we do this. And then we can tape this in place. Kind of like they had it before. I just used the same piece of tape. It should still be sticky enough. And yes, that gives us plenty of wire to reach all the way across. Go underneath some things here. You gotta kinda take a look at this. Alright. This piece has to split off from these two. These two. Let's see here. I'm gonna need my flathead. On right, my screwdriver. These two go up here. Get the wires just right. And this is the fun part. Putting wires in place are always fun. Especially when you're like me and you got big stubby fingers. Never makes this part easy. There we go, that's one. Get it tightened down. two in place and tighten it down. All right. So we got those two tightened down. Now we can take this one and feed it out here carefully. And it goes right here. So let's review that. So the first two wires we put in were these two right here which went to these two screws. Okay and if we come down here a little further the next one we put in was this one right here. It has two black wires going into it. This one has a red and a black and this one has a black wire and if you put your smart LCD screen on this is a smart LCD screen board, so it's right above it. Okay, so that's that's the other wires. So that wires the whole thing in. Okay, I'm going to put the bottom back on, then we'll plug it in and heat up the build plate and see if we can get it to warm up. See if it works. Alright guys, here we are. I'm showing you the LCD screen. We'll power her on. Give it a second here. 
There we go. Well, that's good. At least we have a temperature. That's something good to get. We want to make sure we got a temperature reading there. So what we'll do now is we'll come in here and we'll go to prepare. And actually, no, we'll go to control, temperature, bed, and we'll run it up to about 60 degrees. And then we'll let it heat up and we'll see that it heats up okay. All right, guys, there you go. You can see we reached 60. So the bed, the new bed works. The bed's nice and warm. It's about like the other one. You know, where the white line is, is pretty much where the heat stops all the way around it. But the bed did seem to heat up nicely. Okay, guys, but one last thing we'll do to it real quick is we'll level the bed. And I'll show you all how I level it, okay? Okay, guys, I'm going to try and show you all how I do this. So the first thing I do is I'll take my bed and I'll tell it to auto home. Okay, then what I like to do is, come over here real quick, let's get out here to prepare, go all the way down to move, and I want to go to move by point one, go down here to Z, and I'm going to start moving it up slowly. until the nozzle just lets go of the bill plate. So I don't know if you can see that, but the nozzle's not touching right now. Okay? And I can look over here and see my reading says 0.4. So now I know that if I touch the bill plate, I need to make it come up just a hair. Okay, so after I've done that, we can then move this all the way forward and back. And what we want to do is try and see if it looks like it touches more or less as we do it. Now you can't do much about front to back. And when I look at that, I can see there is a difference between here in here the back is actually a little bit higher than the front is okay but there's nothing we can really do about that we can't really do much about front to back the system will automatically handle that front to back shift it's the left to right we can do a little bit about so we can look over here and see that we're just about touching okay let's see if y'all can see this there you go so when we get over here, we can see that we're just about touching. So we can actually come over here and grab the screw. Now one of the things I like to do is if you see the switch over here, let's see if you can see it still. Yeah, you can still see it. Is if I come over here and I spin this till the switch, see how the switch disengaged? Because if you do that and run it down till the switch disengages, Okay, and then you watch underneath at the nozzle, and you just barely turn it until that nozzle lifts, lifts up just a tiny little bit. Then you run it to the other side, and you do the same thing. Now, I know it's really hard to show you all this on film, guys. I'm sorry. Now, I can tell that that looks straight across. It looks like it's keeping about the exact same height all the way across. I go to the middle. Yep, looks pretty good. Looks like it's keeping it all the way across. 
So that lets me know that the height should now be in the corners, up and down, the tip of it should now be level. And that's as level as the build plate is. If the build plate's at a little bit of an angle, it's at a little bit of an angle. But that's okay. That's what I'm adjusting for. So that means that, like, that means it mechanically has to do less leveling. Which, in my opinion, means it does a little bit better job printing. The less the mechanics have to do the leveling for you, I think the better it does. But the auto level does help. Alright guys, well we've got the new build plate installed. And it looks good. We've got it nice and level. Um, I am going to switch my videos from releasing on Mondays to releasing on Wednesdays. It just makes it a little easier to do the productions. Uh, so we're going to work on that. Um, I will not have a video this upcoming Wednesday, but I will have one next Wednesday. And we'll go back to R2-D2. Um, I have my Patreon campaign. If you'd like to go donate to Patreon, that would be great. It would help build R2-D2 and help keep the printers up and running so I can keep making content for y'all. Um, if not, that's fine. It'll, videos will always be free. They'll always be on YouTube. I'll always post everything. So, thank y'all for watching. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, have a great day.